Hello, all of you beautiful beings, and welcome to the show. This is episode number nine of the Unleash Your Life podcast. And in this episode, we're going to spend some time digging deeper into the concept of settling that I brought up in episode number eight. I suspect there are a few of you out there still a bit confused about how all of this works. But keep in mind, the good news is anything, any behavior, belief, or bias can change, even if it's been embedded for a really long time. So hang on, and we'll have another wild and fabulous ride together. This is the Unleash Your Life podcast, where you're going to learn what your power leaks are, and more importantly, how to plug them. I'm your host, Lane Smith-Brown. I'm a best-selling author and the founder and coach over at lanesmithbrown.com. And over the last 20 years, I've been guiding people back to their truest selves. You see, most of us are caught in our stories, so we stay trapped. I call those stories power leaks. And when we understand how those power leaks are playing out in our life, we can make a choice to step back into our power. If you're interested in learning more, you can pop over to lanesmithbrown.com. But for now, kick back with a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, or a bag of Doritos, and let's talk about getting what's in the way out of the way through the lens of simple, practical, and easy-to-understand tools and insights that will make a powerful impact on your life starting today. I trust you'll stick around because I'd certainly love the company. All right, welcome back to the show. Let me get you going by sharing another example from my own life. I was a tall kid. Obviously, there was not much I could do about it. But my height elicited the most surprising responses from my classmates. They equated me being tall with me being a bully. So they isolated me from the group. The connection for me was completely confusing because my nature was quite gentle and usually bent quite easily towards kindness. My nine-year-old self didn't know what to do with their reaction. That little girl just wanted people to see that she was kind and sweet and wanted to be included. So this is how my mind coped. Whenever I felt like someone didn't like me, I would deliberately become someone who was overly helpful or accommodating, all to the detriment of my own needs and desires. Now, I'll go into how I transformed this lie into the truth of who I am in a bit. But for now, just remember this. Our egoic brain is built to take whatever we've learned uh, to feel as familiar and find more things to match to that feeling. As an adult, if I found myself in a situation where I imagined that I was not being liked, I would automatically go into hyper-kindness and accommodation mode. I became more interested in someone else's happiness as soon as the they might be thinking you're a bully trigger was pulled, and that response was completely automatic. Now, later in life, I grew to recognize the pattern, and with that recognition, I could let the insecurity trigger go. The truth is, I'm not a bully. Those kids were wrong. And when I was able to let the lie or let the lie go from the subconscious mind, I was free to be kind for kindness sake, instead of living in an illusion that I could control what others were thinking about me. More importantly, when I released the lie, I gained the ability to see that my needs were just as important as everyone else's. As much as I knew on a cognitive level that I was not a bully, I spent years assuming people would see me that way if I appeared confident. 
so I put a lid on displaying my abilities so others wouldn't get a chance to interpret my strength as bully behavior. Is it not amazing how a tiny misunderstanding at nine affected how I walked in the world, including my personal life and my career, into my early 30s? And here's another example from my earlier years. When I was in grade six, there were reports of a sexual predator stalking our neighborhood. This would have been probably the early 70s. Now, parents were understandably concerned for the safety of their kids. I was a very mature kid for my age, so when the news of this dangerous character was announced, I was asked to chaperone some of the younger kids home. What my teachers thought they were telling me was they could trust me to be rational and responsible. What I heard, and more importantly, what I felt, however, was I was expendable and not as important as those I was being called to protect. It seemed to me that the teachers were more concerned for others than they were for me. And that misunderstanding got hidden way back in the unworthiness drawer and would take a good deal of work later on in my life to eliminate. So what's your version of those stories? I suspect something came up for you. Did you remember something from kidhood where you were misunderstood? Is there a memory where you can already see you might have misunderstood the intention of someone else and took that misinterpretation into your life and you're playing from it? We all have unconsciously repeated that early childhood stuff over and over again, simply because our subconscious brain is working from the familiar equals safe scenario that we've discussed on countless podcasts now. You're used to this feeling. So you are unconsciously drawn to situations that will affirm that feeling. Your ego is keeping you safe by keeping you in situations that feel familiar. And here's the flip side. Sometimes we can think we're choosing the exact opposite and our ego will still deke us out like this. Let's say you had a difficult mother and unconsciously you draw to yourself a difficult mate. They may be all bright and shiny at first, but the truth comes out when you start feeling more comfortable with each other. That unconscious pull can be because you unconsciously believe you deserve that feeling, or you unconsciously want to redeem that feeling that started in your kidhood. Let me show you how. You pick someone similar to your difficult mother because you unconsciously want to change the outcome. So you think that there is something that you can do or say to turn your difficult mate into a sweetheart. You unconsciously want to redeem that experience that you had with your mother. It's like you're saying to yourself, if I would have been stronger, smarter, calmer, better, I could have changed my childhood experience with my mother. Oh, honey, it doesn't work that way. Here's another way we do this. You know how so many people see the potential in someone? They marry or mate with the potential of that person in their mind. It's all the same stuff. It's an attempt at trying to redeem the past. And that choice will always reaffirm what you currently believe about yourself. The past can't be changed. It doesn't even exist anymore. But when we get caught in thought loops and behavior loops, we're acting as if we can change something that's already long gone. It's in the ether. It only exists in your mind. It's done. It cannot be altered in any way, shape, or form. 
The only power you have is changing the cycle moving forward. You need to move into a new way of seeing yourself now. You need to go where you want to go now. You need to be who you want to be now. And this is something you need to learn to know about yourself. You did nothing wrong. You didn't deserve whatever you're currently using as your excuse for where you currently are. But you did choose it. Now, don't panic. This is going to turn out into uh, turn out to be a good thing once we're done here, okay? So just bear with me because that probably triggered a whole bunch of stuff for a whole bunch of you, okay? You didn't deserve whatever you're currently using as your excuse for where you currently are, but you did choose it. When you embrace the enormous power in that knowledge that you chose it, you will take yourself wherever Ever you want to go and you will be able to show others how to do the same. Here's the truth. Until we wake up to that power, we will unconsciously choose to repeat our childhood over and over again. Either from a perspective of this is all there is, this is all I deserved, or with the repetitive thought that something you could have done or said could have changed the outcome. As if we can, from this side of our kidhood, recreate our kidhood. Well, you can, but the recreation isn't in changing the past. It is in reconciling it with the gift it came with. So before we go there, Let's look at a few other scenarios. We've all had a girlfriend or coworker that is nice. She's super nice. She's terrific. She deserves someone wonderful in her life. But she dates assholes who treat her like shit. Or you get guys who are really decent. They're thoughtful and kind. They're smart, capable. But they draw mates who are never satisfied and are constantly pointing out their flaws and undermining them in some way. As cruel and unfair as this all seems from the outside, those individuals' egos are only bringing them back to the familiar equals safe scenario. What you believe about yourself is what others will believe about you. If you believe you're not enough, that you are inferior in some way, the energy that you walk into a room with will draw to you people who will affirm those feelings to you. Everywhere we look, it's a mirror. So if somebody makes you feel like you're not heard, you're not valued, you're not worthy, more than likely, 99.9% .9 of the time, it is the fact that you believe all of those things about yourself at a core level. And what you're drawing to yourself is affirming that knowledge. The only way that changes is when the belief changes at the core level, not just on the surface. So if you picked up that you were dispensable, disposable, a throwaway, or whatever thing you can come up with, and then you experience a horrible situation, it will reaffirm to you what you've learned to believe about yourself. Does that make sense? In that moment, what you're believing about yourself is a lie but you're not acting like it's a lie. No one consciously chooses abuse. No one consciously chooses sickness. No one consciously chooses to feel 
worthless. But if that's what you learn to believe about yourself, especially at an early age, you will continue to draw that familiar feeling until you learn to expect something better. Correct the lie and start to believe something new and your experiences must change. They must. It's just the way the world works, the way the universe works, the way collective consciousness works. So you can have a horrific experience in your life and change what it is you believe about yourself and stop those horrific experiences from happening to you again. It is the belief that brought that experience into your life, not the lack of worthiness. You're not a target. You are just simply an energetic match to that experience. And now I can hear the groaning that says, I'm blaming the victim and I'm not. No one is a victim. For every example you can find of someone having a horrible childhood, you can find an example of someone who took that same experience and used it to launch themselves into the exact opposite situation. Let's pick on Oprah for a second, since many of you know who she is. She was born into extreme poverty. She clearly wasn't white, so she was at a disadvantage in a world that didn't honor that difference. She was abandoned by her mother, was raped as a little girl, and then raped several more times before she was even in middle school. Family and friends betrayed her and abandoned her all through her life. But somehow she's done okay for herself, and she's inspired others to do the same. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Tony Robbins' style, but he went from being a beaten, abused, and hungry child to standing in his own power and feeding millions upon millions of people, both figuratively and literally. And he's inspired others to do the same. Do you know Malala Yousafzai from Pakistan? She was born into a culture who thought girls should not be educated. And she was shot in the face for attempting to get an education and advocating for other girls to do the same. Malala is not even out of college yet, but Hundreds of thousands of girls around the world are getting their education as a result of Malala's resilience and tenacity and the fortitude to not accept the lie her culture taught her. And she's inspiring others to do the same. All three of those examples got started with nothing. Although Tony had the advantage of being a white guy, which is no small thing, he's at least redeemed that advantage in many ways to help others change their origin story, to move themselves forward. Look, there are stories of kids raising themselves on the streets of large cities with no apparent advantage of any kind, only the knowledge that they are meant for more. And they found ways of transforming their experience and have inspired others to do the same. There are women who took themselves and their kids out of danger and found a way to change the trajectory of their lives, and they have inspired others to do the same. Oh, it's rarely easy, but when a new belief takes hold, it contains a momentum that propels us forward. There's an author called Caroline Mace who used the line in one of her books and it haunted me for quite a while. I knew there was truth in it, but I couldn't quite get it until one day I did. Here's the line. There's an energetic force contained within the illusion. There's an energetic force contained within the illusion. 
So here's how I've learned to interpret that. The illusion is the lie we've been telling ourselves. The energetic force is the energy trapped in us by that lie. So imagine a cork pushed into a champagne bottle. That is a tremendous amount of energy contained just below this small amount of cork. When the cork is released, you could bring a chandelier to the ground, if you happen to have a chandelier you'd like to bring down to the ground, with the energy that's contained inside of that bottle. It's a tremendous amount of energy that is released, getting rid of that tiny little cork. So you're walking around at this, as this most powerful and delicious human, but you're believing a lie that you're unworthy, unlucky, stupid, incapable, not smart enough or confident enough. Pick one, anyone, or slip in one of your own. All of that is the cork. And it's jammed in so tight that the thought that you are powerful and connected to the energy of possibilities contained within the cosmic field is completely lost on you. Until one day when you hear this and you begin to see the truth of it and you wiggle that cork just a little bit and then another bit of truth gets in and you wiggle it a little bit more and then one day that damn cork pops. And you're standing in the divinity of who you are and what you've come to do. That's the work we're doing here. It's messy and emotional. It can be overwhelming when we see how that lie has morphed and mutated its way into all kinds of areas. But here's the truth. Once you start honestly looking at this and honestly moving yourself forward and you change a belief and embrace the new truth, it will begin to topple others. And more of that old stuff will come crumbling down leaving you to build whatever you want. What do you hear when I say that? Are you filled with fear or anticipation? This work is not for the weak, but if this is resonating with you and you're feeling a pull, let's press on and learn more. For now, do me this favor. As you recognize a lie, you've been believing until now, and it tries to take over, use this simple line. I used to believe that, but I no longer do. I used to believe that, but I no longer do. I used to believe that, but I no longer do. Say it until it rings true. Hearing these words will start to reprogram your subconscious mind. This is simple and effective way to introduce a new familiar feeling to your ego so your new familiar can become the new safe. So what's the cork or the power leak you are currently using to hold back your authentic power? What's the lie? What are you currently using as an excuse to live a smaller life than you came to live? There is a clue in your language, so be aware of that. Listen for things in your life where you let yourself off the hook. I'm not lucky. I can't catch a break. I don't have enough money for that. My mate would never support me or understand me if I tried that. There are people that are better at that than I am. I'm too old. I'm too young. That sounds like too much work. Maybe in my next life. Those are all corks. Those are all power leaks. And, they've, and they're all based on a lie you've grown accustomed to. You're corked. But you can pop that sucker anytime you choose. 
So we spent this show talking about how subtle some of this shit is. How we can feel like life is just happening to us instead of for us. We feel like we're not in choice. And sometimes hearing that we're making choices that we don't like can be disempowering. But we also talked about how you can turn that on its head and you can realize that you have the ability to create whatever you want going forward. And so now you know you can do something different. And as you now become more aware of all the things that have been playing in your background, you have an amazing tool to help reprogram your egoic mind to find new familiar or new ways of feeling safe. And it goes like this. I used to believe blank, but I no longer do. I used to believe blank, but I no longer do. I used to believe blank, but I no longer do. Oh boy, what did that feel like? Was that a lot to take in? I knew what was coming and it still feels like another loaded show. But I hope that new tool really sets you up to navigate this change. It's a great start. We're going to dig in more next time. So until then, keep popping those corks and embracing a new familiar. That's it for this show. Check out weirdhummingbirds.com if you want more resources. And... Be sure to be back here next time. Well, I hope this show rocked your world a little bit. (laughs) If you're ready to take this learning to a whole new level, pop over to lanesmithbrown.com and sign up for our weekly Wild Wonderings email and check out the coaching options as well. Oh, and if you haven't already... Subscribe to this podcast, will you? It's how we get these tools into the world and change the world for the better. Ta for now.